you never know how far away you are from an amazing archaeological discovery. There could be hidden wonders below every street you walk down. There might even be some hiding in the walls of your home. There's rarely a month that goes by without a stunning discovery from the distant past coming to light somewhere in the world. And we've put the very best of the most recent discoveries together for you in this video. We tend to think of woolly mammoths as being relics of the ancient world, much like dinosaurs. That's not totally accurate. While it's true that they existed a very long time ago and they're extinct now, they once lived at the same time as early humans, and we now have proof that early humans hunted them for meat and for their fur. We can say this with certainty thanks to the discovery of 14 woolly mammoth skeletons in a pit in Toltepec, just north of Mexico City, which experts believe were deliberately built as mammoth traps by our early ancestors. If they're right, it changes the way we think of the relationship between humans and mammoths. In the past, it was always assumed that humans only killed mammoths if they came across an injured or trapped one by accident. The size and shape of the pits, which were almost six feet deep, means that they must have been dug deliberately. And so those early human hunters were a little more clever and resourceful than we've previously given them credit for. The Nazca Lines in Peru have been attracting attention from archaeologists and scientists for many years now. The gigantic geoglyphs have been etched into the ground for miles, but can only be seen and appreciated in full from a position of great elevation. The people who lived in the area of Peru over 2,000 years ago wouldn't have had access to any technology that would have allowed them to get into the air. So why would they draw lines that nobody could really see? How could they even coordinate themselves well enough to draw their designs without anyone coordinating them from above? We may never know the answers to those questions, but we do know that we keep finding more of them. A Japanese team from Yamagata University have just located more than 100 previously unseen figures, which they've dated to approximately 1,900 to 1,800 years ago. Some of the new designs look like animals and birds that live on Earth, but there are also some monstrous pictures and alien-like creatures, too. Some archaeological discoveries hide in plain sight. There's been a huge stone wall running 71 miles in the west of Iran for at least 1,600 years, but nobody's ever bothered to pay it any attention before. In terms of length and size, it's comparable to the famous Hadrian's Wall built in Great Britain by the ancient Romans but doesn't enjoy any of that wall's profile or recognition. Experts say that more than 35 million square feet of stone would have been used to build the wall, which would require a huge workforce here and now, let alone back then. At various points along the wall, traces of pottery have been found, as well as remnants of old structures and buildings, which have almost totally crumbled away. Interestingly, Although the existence of the wall has never been recorded in any official document, people who live close to it have been aware of it for generations and call it the Gari Wall, although the origin of the name is unknown. We have no idea who built it or why it was built, but from what little remains, we can say that it was likely 10 feet high and 13 feet thick, so it may have had defensive properties. Ancient tombs run like labyrinths in and beneath the Jiangxi province in East China, so it's little wonder that we haven't got around to discovering everything they're hiding so far. Archaeologists are always hopeful of a remarkable discovery when they gain access to a tomb for the first time, but nothing could have prepared them for what they would find in the tomb of Liu He in Nanchang. There were more than two million copper coins in the tomb, with a weight of more than 10 tons and an approximate value of $175,000. As well as all the copper, there were also more than 10,000 items made of gold, bronze, and iron. Such a lavish tomb is only fitting for someone of Li He's nobility. He was the grandson of Emperor Wu, who is considered to be the greatest of all the Han Dynasty rulers. The tomb the discovery came from may not even have given up all its secrets yet. The 2,000-year-old site was only opened five years ago, 
and it covers almost half a million square feet. There's a lot of exploring to be done there yet. The better our technology becomes, the better our chances of finding things left behind by the people who came before us. There's been a Bronze Age monument hiding in the Forest of Dean in England for more than 4,000 years, but we've only been able to detect what's left of it thanks to the fact we've been able to laser scan it from the air. The scans performed by archaeologist John Hoyle have revealed the existence of a ring cairn, a type of circular bank with an arrangement of standing limestones placed on top of it. Nothing that closely resembles it has been found anywhere near it in Gloucestershire, making the newly located feature unique within the area. The scanning system that was used to discover the cairn works by firing laser beams from a plane to make a 3D model of the landscape without the trees in the way, exposing things that could never be seen with the naked eye. Although other sites like this monument have been noted elsewhere in the British Isles, we're still no closer to finding out what they were used for. The city of Mahindraparvata was once considered to be so mystical that some historians wondered whether it had ever really existed at all. Its name was mentioned several times in the records of the Khmer Empire, which once dominated large areas of South Asia from the 9th century to the 15th century but no physical evidence of its existence has ever been found, until now. The famously lost city has once again been found thanks to aerial mapping, and even though most of it is now overgrown with jungle, there are still the weathered remnants of statues and temples there to mark its location. The city, the name of which translates into English as Mountain of Indra, King of the Gods, sits 30 miles north of Siem Reap in the Phnom Kulen Highlands of Cambodia. Even getting these few pictures of the city was dangerous for the photographers who went there to confirm the aerial finding. The whole area is still littered with landmines dating back to the rule of the Khmer Rouge during the 1970s. Now that it's been found, it will be fully explored and excavated, although that's likely to be a slow and laborious process. A 7,000-year-old fortress wall recently discovered in Turkey has been raising eyebrows among the archaeology community because they're surprised at what it's made of, and they don't know what it was put there to protect. The wall has been uncovered as part of an ongoing excavation project at the Yumuktepe Mound, which is in the Mersin province of the country. The 21-foot-high fortress wall is based on limestone followed by six feet of cut stone and a further nine feet of mud bricks. The village beyond the wall contained an old castle, but nothing that seems so remarkable that such a formidable defensive wall would have been required. Researchers have speculated that it may have something to do with the level of scientific knowledge that the villagers possessed. It's thought that this was the first place in the world to start producing molten copper which would go on to form the basis of many of the weapons and tools used in war as well as in construction. So long as human beings are willing to pay high prices for attractive decorative items, there will always be a market for pearls. That must make this pearl especially valuable because it's the oldest naturally occurring pearl ever discovered. The pearl was found in a place where there's already plenty of wealth in the surrounding area. Abu Dhabi and the United Arab Emirates. Given the age and polished state of the pearl, which turned up during an excavation project at Marawa Island, historians believe that it serves as evidence that pearls were used in trade deals in the area 8,000 years ago. It's likely that then, as now, they were primarily used as decorative items and were probably traded with Mesopotamia in exchange for ceramics. The discovery has officially been named as the Pearl of Abu Dhabi, and will shortly be going on public display as part of an exhibition called 10,000 Years of Luxury at the Abu Dhabi version of the Louvre Art Gallery. Based on the woolly mammoth traps we showed you earlier, we've already had to start thinking that our ancient ancestors were more intelligent than we've long assumed. Now we might have to give them even more credit because it seems that Neanderthals living 50,000 years ago had a basic understanding of the principles of glue and adhesives. A stone tool recently discovered in the Netherlands bears the traces of a glue made from birch tar, and archaeologists say there's no reason to believe that the practice wasn't widespread. The tool, 
which was likely used either for scraping animal skins or cutting plant fibers, had a grip that was entirely made from tar, without a wooden or bone shaft in the tool implanted into the tar to secure the tool. That would have allowed the tool's owner to apply more pressure without cutting their hands, and therefore made the tool more precise. It may not be sophisticated, but it's still evidence of precision engineering, done Neanderthal style. Thankfully, in the civilized world, we no longer burn, drown, or otherwise murder women on the suspicion that they might be witches. But there's no doubting the fact that our forebearers of a few centuries ago were deathly afraid of witches and witchcraft. A recent find at a pub in Northamptonshire, England confirms it. The Star and Garter pub of Watford Village was the birthplace of Angeline Tubbs in 1761. She went on to move to New York, where she became known as the Witch of Saratoga, and it would seem that whoever lived in the pub didn't want Angeline or her familiars coming back to do harm, and so they hid this bottle of anti-witch potion in the roof to ward her off. Inside the bottle are human teeth, broken glass, fish hooks, and a liquid of unknown origin. Glass bottles of this style were first made around 1830, and so the bottle can't be any older than that. Local historians say that it was once common to put bottles like this within the walls or foundations of new buildings at the time, even if the builders didn't believe in witchcraft. It was considered better to be safe than sorry. A British couple tidying out their attic had the shock of their lives recently when they found an ancient Indian treasure, although it didn't take them long to realize where the treasure must have come from. One of the couple, who didn't wish to be named, is a direct descendant of Major Thomas Hart, a British soldier who fought against Indian forces led by Tipu Sultan in 1799. Hart and his troops won the battle, and it would appear that he kept some of the legendary Indian freedom fighters' possessions as trophies of his big win. The items had been under a blanket in the home, and are thought to have been moved around between the family for centuries without ever properly being looked at. Among the collection is a flintlock gun and a golden sword, and also a sword which has a hider symbol. That marks it out as the property of Tipu Sultan's own father, and therefore makes it unlikely he'd have given it up voluntarily. The hoard should technically be worth millions of dollars, although some people feel that the goods should be classed as stolen and handed back to India. Pictish artifacts are hard to come by, and Pictish cross slabs might be the hardest artifacts to come by even within that collection. Less than 50 of the marker stones have ever been found, and that's what makes the recent discovery of one in relatively good condition in Dingwall, Scotland, so remarkable. The stone, which is approximately 1,200 years old, would have been placed just outside a Pictish settlement of the time as a warning about who lived in the nearest village. Stones like these were supposed to put barbarians and other potential invaders off the idea of coming looking for a fight, or for anything to steal. That mindset explains why there are so many swords and shields carved on the stone, along with animal-headed soldiers and fearsome mythical beasts. Strangely, we've only been shown one side of the stone so far. The team who found it are keeping the other side a secret while they perform some more research. That makes us very curious about what they found. Although we're sure they'll let us know eventually. Subscribe to the channel and turn on notifications, and you will be the first to know when a new video comes out. Thank you for watching and see you soon.